Hi, this is Swapnil Bharatiya and welcome to TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Stephen Fable, Director of Products at Canonical. Today you are releasing uh, Canonical's, you know, um, a flagship product, which is, you know, uh, Ubuntu uh, version 20.04 LTS. Uh, first of all, what is the code name for this release? Did you guys run out of ideas or are you still <laughs> doing that? Well, it's it's, it's focal fossa. Uh, we uh, we were not running out of ideas yet. We're recycling the alphabet, as you m might have noticed. Um, uh, we're not running out of ideas just yet. So let's talk about the release. Uh, that's one of the key highlights, one of the key features. Uh, but before I go there, just as to help us understand these features better, can you tell us a bit about who is the target audience for Ubuntu LTS today? Well, it's you know it's funny you ask because our uh, our answer is actually who isn't uh, in a lot of ways, right? We've seen an incredible amount of adoption across all of the areas of compute that uh, that are relevant. So you know, first and foremost, of course, we see public cloud uh, as being an incredible uh, amount of adoption and and continued adoption. We continue to main maintain a, a a leadership position in the public cloud in terms of consumption. And uh, a lot of what uh, went into 2004, into the development cycle and into the features is to cater to that constituency. But in the private data center as well, we've seen uh, progress around you know, private cloud, we've seen adoption around AI ML, analytics, et cetera. So a lot of this stuff is, uh, is really centered on the enterprise use case. And 2004 should make it quite obvious that not only are we an alternative uh, enterprise Linux system, we're actually, uh, you know, a, a, an incredible, uh, an incredibly attractive proposition with a lot of benefits for customers, for enterprises, for telcos, etc., to be using in the data center as well. And so, uh, thirdly, uh, you know, things that I wanted to touch on with the 2004 release are uh, edge computing because that is something that just simply evolved and matured over the last two years as uh, an area of compute where Ubuntu really shines for its flexibility, for uh, its ease of use, for its stability, and for its performance characteristics. So if I'm not wrong, if you look at Ubuntu, it's also a developer platform, which, which is used by developer to develop. At the same time, it's an operator's platform where you, you, know, you run a lot of you know, your workloads. Is that right? Yes, that is right. I mean, certainly we haven't forgotten our roots in the desktop. Uh, it, it remains a, a big portion of, uh, of, of focus for what we do. And uh, 2004 is uh, one of the best uh, pieces of work I've ever seen. I, I think it's the best desktop that we've ever released. Um, we we focused especially around uh, you know on the developer around container centric development around AI ML. We've done an incredible amount of work over the last few years trying to get the right developer substrates onto the local workstation and then uh, uh, by extension also onto devices. Can you talk about some of the key features, key highlight of this release? One of the, uh, the, the, the features that I think is most interesting is that uh, in a lot of ways we've seen, um, well, it's not actually a feature, but in a lot of ways we've seen endorsement, right? So you, you, you talk to, uh, uh, you know, to software folks, people who, who are publishing software in an app store, in a software store, and increasingly they're doing this on our app store, right? On the Snap store, where we, uh, where we offer all of the compelling uh, tools and, and you know, desktop programs that our users are interested in. And uh, you know, a lot of the, the cross-platform uh, frameworks such as Electron play a large role here. So when you look at uh, the Ubuntu desktop today, you actually see the availability of all of the uh, um, you know, market leaders, if you will, in that category around uh, IDEs, around uh, media players, streaming uh, players, et cetera, right? So you see just an incredible amount of endorsement there. And so from that perspective, it really unlocks the uh, developer to be working with Ubuntu because they can access all of the software that they used to, um, and they can use all of the, uh, you know, all of the collaboration software that they used to. For example, uh, you know, we have this interview over Zoom, right? So there is a Zoom client for, uh, uh, you know, for Ubuntu, same as Skype, etc. And it's not just third-party uh, uh, enthusiasts who are developing. This is actually market leaders in their space who are submitting their. Uh, applications. Since you mentioned that we are talking over Zoom, we should be actually doing it in person. The reason is the crisis that we are going through right now. Uh, this crisis actually, you know, kind of uh, changed the way we look at the infrastructure, the, the way we look at security, the way we look at how our employees get access to, you know, the enterprise, you know, software. Uh, 
because you know you are no longer secure and safe inside your 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 corporate firewall and environment you are working remotely in terms of you know easy access move to the cloud and security so I just want to hear your perspective, you know, from from the open source world and which is distributed, and you know, from from the Linux and Ubuntu perspective, how do you think this will change the way we build system, we secure system, and we give access to systems? It's 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 a great question because we have spent the majority of the last two years thinking about exactly this problem, right? Uh, when you when you think of Ubuntu, you 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 don't just think of a Linux operating system. Yes, of course we we are, and uh, you know we're very proud of, uh, of of everything that we do in the hardware layer, in the certification, the silicon enablement, the cloud enablement. Uh, we're very proud of the work that we do in the kernel, in our collaboration with the upstream partners, but also, of course, with again the silicon partners and the hardware manufacturers around the world, where we have done just an incredible amount of. Uh, step up in 2004 over the last two years in terms of the coverage of uh, uh, of hardware, the uh, you know compatibility and the performance work. Uh, but then it also goes into the apps, right, and into the larger open source ecosystem. And in a lot of ways, you can think of this as an answer by uh, you know brick and mortar business or maybe more traditional businesses uh, to Silicon Valley innovation, right? All the things that that the Silicon Valley brought to the table in terms of outperforming, out innovating, um, uh, you know, the competition and entering the market and disrupting it, uh, those technologies are now actually adopted by enterprises that have uh, traditionally been focused on much more, you know, traditional means of creating software. So we see a lot of adoption there of enterpri enterprise uh, focused open source. And in addition to that, actually, we've seen a lot of open source being created by uh, by parties that aren't in the business of publishing software. They're just publishing the or creating this open source software as participants of the open source community, but they have no interest in, for example, taking on a support uh, contract under SLA or you know, covering security. So I think here is where we saw uh, an incredible amount of, um, uh, of opportunity for us. And uh, you, you know, we're, we're proud to expand on our uh, extended security uh, maintenance product, which not only covers now the, the you know, ma main core OS piece plus the desktop, which has always been included for free and will remain and continue to be included for free for five years uh, as an LTS. But we've also expanded that both in duration up to 10 years and also in, uh, um, in coverage, in terms of coverage, by also adding all of the devs uh, that are in universe to our uh, security coverage. So it's uh, just vastly uh, more coverage in terms of security patches, uh, where we proactively go out and scan for upstream patches that have been uh, made public, our four CVEs that have been published, and then making those uh, available um, for free to community members, but for our uh, commercial customers under SLA. Can you talk about some of the the, the baked in security with this release so that the system is is kind of relatively secure by default. One of the uh, uh, the features that we've included now and that we're also actually going to backport to previous LTS releases such as 18.04 is WireGuard VPN. Um, so we've joined WireGuard as a uh, as a member of the community and we are proud to include it and ship it in 20.04, uh, fully supported. It's the next generation VPN protocol um, that uh, has us excited, and uh, you know we've seen just an incredible amount of interest in uh, in the user base as well as in the in the enterprise for uh, more flexible VPN solutions that are you know easier to use, uh, you know user friendly uh, and secure. So we see WireGuard as a next step uh, into that direction and uh, especially our inclusion of it into our release. So when you look at Ubuntu family you know, of products, of course you have this Ubuntu LTS that is kind of meant for desktop, workstation, server. Can you talk about what, uh, what, what, uh, how does the family of products for Ubuntu looks like? And what kind of, kind of sync or cadence is between those releases is that once you release one Ubuntu, that's everywhere or different you know products have their own cycles? Sure, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to. So uh, the desktop and the server follow a, a basically the same uh, release cycle. So as you know, every six months, we release a new version of Ubuntu. Every two years, we, re we release a new version of LTS, which comes with up to 10 years of, uh, uh, of security coverage and support. 
uh, five years of which are part of the standard maintenance, and then another five years can be added on for our commercial customers. And so as a consequence, you always have, uh, you know, two, two or three uh, um, LTS versions uh, simultaneously under support at any given moment, um, mainly because of the, the way that the cadences uh, line up. So, uh, you know, every two years, an LTS, like I said, every six months, a new release for uh, every desktop. Every LTS release, uh, so again, every two years, we also release a version of our uh, IoT-focused and devices-focused um, product called IoT uh, Open to Core. And uh, that is simply named by the year. So we will be releasing Ubuntu Core 20 um, in a couple of weeks. We have a, a, a public beta coming up um, uh, sometime next, next month, uh, beginning of May, uh, with a planned release date around June. And so that will be a separate announcement. We've made a, a lot of strides uh, in, in, the, in the devices, on the devices side and for IoT especially. And so uh, Ubuntu Core 20 is... Uh, you know, is, is the uh, accumulation and the summary of all that work. Well, one last question well, before we wrap this up is uh, <laughs> Linux on Windows, because earlier it started off that, you know, it was just a subsystem. Then finally, Microsoft is actually shipping a Linux kernel with Windows. And Canonical played a very big role in increasing the user base of Linux kernel by working with, with Microsoft closely and bring WSL there. Uh, can you talk a bit quickly about, you know, uh, uh, what is what's going on these days there, and how does that impact uh, Ubuntu? You know, when when Linux is running on Windows itself. Yeah. So we, you know, I mean, of course, we don't lack any jokes about the Linux desktop, right? But maybe this is the year uh, with uh, WSL uh, uh, coming in. But uh, it, yes, it's true. I mean, we're uh, we're the top app in the Microsoft Store, uh, believe it or not. So uh, a lot of um, a lot of endorsement there where uh, developers are in the community, the WSL uh, community, where we also actually uh, sponsor a WSL conference. Uh, we're releasing videos on that uh, as we speak. So, you know, stay tuned for that. But, um, you know, we've been working with the community and with Microsoft especially to make it a very smooth uh, a journey for somebody who wants to use Ubuntu in this context. Because, as you said, Ubuntu is a very popular build environment. It's a popular uh, a substrate to, to run your applications on no matter where you're at, whether you're in uh, the public cloud or on a private uh, a data center. It does not matter, right, even in devices as we just discussed. So, um, you, you know, having a, a Ubuntu available locally to you as a target, for example, for, uh, you know, visual code is incredibly helpful because you can immediately build your applications on the target platform rather than, you know, having to log into a remote server, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been working very closely with, uh, with Microsoft um, to integrate Ubuntu uh, tightly into WSL. Uh, we are, uh, you know, offering support for WSL to our enterprise customers, and that's already true today, uh, where WSL is being used on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, obviously, we're looking forward to the launch of WSL2, where we'll be available at launch. Thank you, uh, Stefan, for taking your time out of your schedule and talking to me today and explaining all these nitty gitties about Ubuntu. And I look forward to seeing you soon, but hopefully in person. So once again, thank you. Absolutely. Same here. Thank you so much for having me. And back to our audience, thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And also don't forget to hit on that notification bell there so that every time we upload a video, you will be notified. Thank you.